Alright, how's it going guys? So, I've been kind of playing around with this idea for a little while to make, uh, but I only really recently decided to make an actual video on this because I got kind of a, I got a decent amount of actually requests to make this. And I saw the request and I was like, you know what, I've already got like a small bullet point form script that I've just got sitting around, so let's just do this. So today I'm going to kind of be doing a sort of general Black Survival tips and tricks guide. Uh, for the most part, this is geared towards newer players, so if you've played the game a lot, uh, you probably won't like this video. Uh, but anyways, I've got a lot of stuff to say, so I might actually end up making this into a two-part video. So if you liked this and you want to see more videos along the lines of this format, please let me know. I don't want to be doing something that nobody actually finds interesting. Uh, but with all that being said, let's just kind of get started with it. So the first thing to talk about is the accessory slot. So if you're taking a route that doesn't have priority in an early game accessory, uh, like something like Angel Wing or Buddha Saria, uh, then you need to make sure that you're filling your this slot effectively. For that reason, kind of my first quote unquote tip is this, uh, wear a box if you pass it. Or ba basically, a lot of people go through the game uh, eating kind of naked pills or naked chocolate pie, and this is really an inefficient way to use your recover items. So if you see a box, and you're not actively building into an effective accessory, wear the box, because upgrading pills or chocolate pie, it's bad if you have to go out of your way to get the box, but it's an extremely efficient use of your resources if you have the box just on your person to be able to effectively upgrade into this. And of course, in addition, it offers a, a slight armor bonus. It's very minor, but I mean, it's better than nothing, so you may as well make use of this slot, because you're always wanting to make use of your inventory slots to the fullest. And this basically applies to any kind of uh, just accessory that you can find. So the flower is an option, the cross is an option, but the cross doesn't upgrade into very many options. Uh, basically, a lot of characters are never going to be upgrading the cross into anything. And the flower is, it upgrades into a decent amount of things, but it's, I mean, it's le it's more reliant on you finding, uh, finding a few things that you need. In general, the box you're going to be end up using more than the flower. So I would say if it's something like you're at the pond and you have the option between using a your low tier accessory slot as for a flower or a box, I would just recommend using the box at the end of the day. The second thing I want to say is make use of your rare item drops. You should be using 100% of the tree of life that you find in the game. You should never be passing off on a tree of life. Even if your inventory slots are full, you should be making you you should be making space to use the tree of life. The same thing kind of goes for Wickling drops, which are obviously a lot less common. So you should have all relevant rare item drop recipes memorized before you start the game. So Ghost Rider, that's a really big one that a lot of newer players just kind of uh, kind of poo-poo or kind of ignore. Uh, Ghost Rider is kind of a very important, it's a very important item that you should know how to make, and you should always be going out of your way to try to make that, especially in the early game. If you get that in the early game, that's just that's just stupid good luck. You should always be going to building into that. Petal Dew as well is a huge, hugely important recipe to know. Uh, if you get Tree of Life and you have no recovery items, that's just such a quick and efficient recovery item that you can just build right off the bat. Uh, so I mean. For Ghost Rider, you're generally going to want to build if you at least have a few recovery items as resources in your inventory. Uh, also, any relevant Holy Blood weapons, uh, you should 100% be memorizing those. Uh, if you play Stab, you should definitely be memorizing Spear of Long Genius. Uh, there's also the uh, Bastard Sword upgrade for the Holy uh, Holy Blood as well that you should, if you're, like I said, if you're using Stab, you should know how to make both options. Boots of Hermes, uh, Mithril Boots, um, Mithril, uh, Cap the, the Mithril Captain Shield, you should know how to make those as well. I think everyone really knows how to make the shield, how to make Mithril Boots. Boots of Hermes and stuff like that, you should just know how to make those. Moonlight Pendant and uh, Kundala, you should for sure have these memorized off by heart. You don't want to be just passing by a meteorite uh, when you could be putting that into a much better use. So yeah, you just have all these memories, you should have all these recipes converted to memory, for sure. And that kind of point segues into my next point, which is make use of your food drops. Lo learn food recipes off by heart. This is very, very important. You should almost never be dropping scrolls of dongi uh, or ramen or anything along the lines of that. Like, scrolls should pretty much always be going into something like acupuncture or ten tonics because of how quickly they are made into very, very effective uh, recovery items. On that note, learn your bread recipe, so chocolate pie, breadfish, uh, it's not called breadfish, but I, I always call it breadfish, uh, garlic bread, mocha bread, liquor bread, you, you need to have these memories no, uh, pretty much converted to heart. I think any newer player should be using bread seek as their aptitude until they can get more comfortable with the game, get more comfortable with 
uh, roots and recovery items and recipes for recovery items and recipes for just everything in general, I think newer players should always be using Bread Seeker as their aptitude. Uh, and especially as newer players, you don't want to be using your gold for very much because you're, you're, you're using your gold for characters generally, newer players are, right? So you don't want to be using your gold on aptitudes, even though a lot of aptitudes look cool, but a lot of aptitudes for newer players are not going to be as effective as Breadseeker because you need to put kind of time and effort into really get value out of the other aptitudes. Accelerate not so much because Accelerate is pretty brainless, but the lack of recovery is very noticeable even when using Accelerate for a newer player. So, I, like I said, as a newer player, you have to be knowing these bread recipes. These bread recipes are huge. Like, these bread recipes are really, really huge to know as a newer player. I think you should definitely spend time making these, uh, learning these, rather. But, in all honesty, you should be learning all food recipes. Like, the bread recipes, like I said, are pretty big. But you should be learning a lot. You should be learning the majority of the, the food recipes. Like, all the... Uh, you should always be aiming to craft second stage of two-part healing items. So, um... A few examples are like chocolate pie boxes, you want to be making those first aid kits, you want to be making those ten tonics, uh, sashimi, uh, sashimi, it's a quote unquote two part, even though the first part you can't really use as a food item, so it's almost not really a two part, but it really is a two part because I find sashimi, uh, if you get the tuna, you're going to want to be using the two part option for it being the whetstone and the knife into the actual sashimi, because that is one of the best healing items in the game. The, the, the sashimi from the whetstone and the knife, that is one of the best healing items in the game. And uh, uh, potions as well with the, with the herbs and glass bottle, that's an important one to memorize as well, and that's also a two-step uh, recovery option. I can't stress how important it is to have these recipes off by memory. Honestly, I personally think that these food recipes are the most important mess recipe to have off by memory. They're, mo they're definitely more important to have converted to memory than something like an armor, or even something like the, the rare item drops I said above. Maybe, uh, maybe the Tree of Life uh, recipes are pretty important to memorize, but all the other random drops are less important to have converted to memory than food recipes. Food recipes are key. They're 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 key to excelling at the game it is because these these are generally the recipes that you're going to be falling back on when you get put in, a, in into a tough situation. And the time it takes for you to kind of recover from a tough situation based on getting these recovery items or preventing yourself from falling into these tough situations. Um, the, the more you know these recipes, the less time that is going to take overall, which is, which is key. It's huge, it's huge, it's huge, it's so important. And this next part is actually, this next part is going to take a long time, so I might do like an, an, uh, an annotation for how, how this part is divvied up. Uh, and I was actually planning to do a separate video for this, but in all honesty, it's probably most appropriate here, um, uh, and I want to go over what I call noob trap items, uh, and these are items that appear very good on paper for somebody who just joins the game and they're reading through all the information on the on the items and the abilities. And these these items appear very good on paper, but in practice, they're either so underwhelming or so outclassed by another thing, uh, another item that would either take up that slot or take up that time that it takes to build that, that they're essentially what I call a trap for the people who use them, because you're putting yourself at a disadvantage when you do use these. So the first of these options is a very well-known meme within the community, and that's the Laurel Wreath. Now, when I first started the game, I, I looked at this, I thought it was great, right? It's a super easy to make armor. You get Tree of Life, and hey, uh, you've got a head armor that's, that's really super easy to make, and it's done, and it's just out of the way. And the issue with the Wreath is that as an item, as a head armor, uh, not only is it, well, as an, yeah, as an item, not only is it heavily outclassed by all the other relevant head armors in the meta, so Imperial Crown and Tier of Light, primarily, those are basically the best head armors in the game. Um, I guess the, the, uh, the, the tactical helmet is kind of, uh, decent as well, but, like, I never, like, I never want to use my, uh, use my cell phone into making that, and I don't think making that helmet over making Galaxy Watch is ever worthwhile, but um, not only is it heavily outclassed by Imperial Crown and Tier of Light, but it's also heavily outclassed by essentially every other Tree of Life buildable option. So, Ghost Rider, Petal Dew, you're essentially putting yourself at a huge disadvantage by crafting the wreath, 
because you're denying yourself the opportunity of crafting Ghost Rider or crafting Petal Dew or even crafting some of kind of the speed weapons if you get that really early before you have a weapon or or even if you get it late you need a secondary weapon and you don't have need for the I mean when are you not going to have need for Ghost Rider or Petal Dew right but uh, even even these speed weapons you're putting yourself at a disadvantage by not giving yourself access to all of these amazing options because these are some of the best items in the entire game true of life is one of the best items to get in the entire game because like it's a rare drop but it's actually more common as a drop than you might think right like i mean it's not like holy blood or it's not like uh it, it's it's a lot easier to get than you might think at the end of the day so you should you should always be kind of trying to use those as to the best of your ability because they're rare so you're not going to get very many opportunities to get them in a game but you should get one or two you should you should get one like every if, if you're going, like, way into the late game, like, if you're surviving into the late game and you're surviving into, like, the top few people, odds are you're going to come across one during the game. Uh, maybe you don't, you do, and you get unlucky, but some games you're going to find two, some games you're going to find none. But on average, I feel like if you're one of the last, like, three or four people alive, you're going to come across it potentially at least once. So I, sp I spent a lot of time on that because that is, uh, that's kind of a really big, kind of, that's, like, the go-to noob trap item that I always take when I explain things. Uh, but going on to the next one, the next is Sunset Armor, and based on the description of Sunset Armor, you would assume that it refers to your HP recovery rate as well, but it doesn't. It affects your uh, first aid heal time. And a base 50 armor, which is pretty weak to begin with, like, I think, I, I, I won't get into that, I'm just gonna say base 50 is pretty weak to begin with, but uh, this armor that's missing two items from being a base 65 armor, and one of these items can be found in the same location as the gemstone, which you use to make sunset armor. But um, this armor that is only missing two items to go from being base 50 to a base 65 armor, you should never use sunset armor as your go-to armor, because it's just so easy and so much better to use alternatives. And it's, like I said, like, for that, it's heavily outclassed by literally every other leather armor upgrade uh, option that you have. So Commander's Armor, da Dazzling Armor, Mithril Armor, these are all just so much better alternatives. And you're not, and like, it, the the quote-unquote time you save to make uh, Sunset Armor is not a significant amount of time. Like, it's almost not as if you save the time, because you're looking for the hammer as well, whereas you could be looking for the chain... Uh, the steel chain for the time you're taking to look for the hammer. So in all honesty, you're really not saving any time. You're just, you're, you're not saving any time. The only difference is you're using a base 50 armor instead of a good, uh, a higher base armor. And like I said, base 50 to base 55 may not seem like that big of a difference, but it is a pretty big difference. And as mentioned, it, the ability does not affect your HP recovery rate, which is, like I said, most people see that and see that as the ability and say, hey, that looks good on paper, but they don't understand that it really only affects your stamina recovery rate. Next is Herbal Medicine, and this one might, might not be too intuitive, uh, and that's why I'm bringing it up. Um, so there's a threshold for when burst healing becomes much less effective than sustained healing. And when you're reaching up to 200 HP burst healing with only one use, that's where you cross the line. Scrolls of Dongyi gives you some of the best healing options in the game. Acupuncture, 10 tonics, uh, which is literally one extra item you have to get to make than to make herbal herbal medicine. So burst healing is it's very effective at the 100 HP range, uh, but once you hit that number, quantity of the basically quantity of how often you use it becomes much important than quantity of the single instance of healing. So this is why something like uh, if you look at something like holy water, is it's basically you, you'd rather find holy water. You'd rather be looking for holy water than looking for fresh sashimi. Fresh sashimi being the the single use hundred h hundred and twenty HP healing that you get at the beach, um, and that's because you're more likely to find multiple holy waters over time searching than multiple amounts of the sashimi. Um, so getting basically two uh, a stack of two holy waters is going to be a lot a lot nicer than a single. Uh, single fresh sashimi, and I mean, that seems obvious to say, because that's 200 healing as opposed to 120 healing, but even something like Herb, which is two 60 HP healing instances, uh, which on paper is just equivalent to a single 120 burst of, 120 HP burst of healing, um, having the two 60 HP healing for the, the Herb is just much more effective 
uh, because you have that sustained healing over time, and you don't have to commit to just a single heal. Because a lot of times, if you use that 120 burst healing, you're not recovering fully 120 HP. A lot of times you're recovering sometimes 80, sometimes 90. Um, rarely are you going to be healing over 100 HP with that single use. Um, plus, a lot of times you want to be clearing up that inventory slot, because it's a one-use item. Uh, you're not going to be getting a stack of like two or three 120 burst sashimis. So the sashimi, using it to get the most value out of it is, is a commitment, right? If you want to get the most amount of healing, you have to be, it's kind of counterintuitive, right? If you want to get the most amount of healing, your health has to be low as low as possible to actually get the maximum value out of it. And the lower your health is, the much more prone to being punished you are. And I, I talked a lot about the sashimi here. The sashimi is not what I'm talking about. Finding sashimi is a single item that you find and it's free. So it's, it's nice because it's free. But herbal medicine, um, crafting herbal medicine is a waste of a lot of, it's a waste of scrolls, it's a waste of turtle shell, and it's a waste of time, and it's a waste of inventory slots, to say the least as well. Uh, so yeah, that's basically everything I have to say about the herbal medicine. Something else here that's kind of controversial that I want to talk about is a uh, quiver and magazine. So a lot of newer players use this as their only uh, as their only accessory when they're using bows or when you're using guns. And don't get me wrong, if you have no other option, you may as well use this. Um, going back to kind of the box example, um, a lot of times you would just rather a magazine or a quiver to just holding a random box, right? And I can agree with that for sure. Uh, don't get me wrong, I agree with that. It's, it's a if you're you just always you always want to use up your slots. So if you're using the quiver or you're using the magazine and it's using up your slot, that's good for sure. But if you're passing up on Moonlight Pendant uh, or each uh, Uchiwa um, or even something like Dice of Destiny or Buddha Serira, then in general you're kind of putting yourself at a, at a disadvantage because the extra armor and the extra kind of utility that these items offer are generally better. Uh, like. Obviously, reloading less is really nice. Uh, that's I, I'm not, I'm not going to deny that reloading that less is always nice. But if you're going into an, if you're going into an engagement, if you're uh, engaging into combat, you're generally going to be a, your your reloads are generally generally going to be at full, and you're generally going to have enough bullets to basically get through that engagement in the first place. So something like six bullets, uh, a, a fight that you kind of engage into, is generally not going to last much more than six turns in general and on the other side if you get kind of attacked out of nowhere and you're not uh not at a very and your reload isn't full if you get attacked out of nowhere in general you it's hard to kind of stay into an engagement where you get jumped on in the first place because first of all you get jumped on in the first place maybe you're uh in the middle of searching for an item and you get an item and you have that box open with the item and you get hit so you have to close the close the window uh, the other thing you have to do is you have to switch stances often uh, because they're going to be an offense stance and you're going to want to switch to offense stance so you don't randomly just find an item in the middle and you get hit twice. So a lot of times you're going to want to have to switch to offense stance. That's going to take time as well. So a lot of times when you get jumped, it's the best strategy is to kind of back out in the area and set yourself up and then re-enter that area. So if you get jumped in an area, you can back out of the area and then you can switch to offense stance while you're not being contested. You can heal off the initial hit that you took while not being contested, and you can reload while also not being contested, and then go right back to that area and take that fight, take that 1v1 that uh, they kind of pushed onto you. So for that reason, the extra bullets don't often really make too much of a difference, because like I said, these fights don't usually go much longer than six uh, six attacks anyways. I mean, if you miss, that's <laughs> you're going to be missing, obviously, if, uh, sometimes, so that's going to be annoying as well. But just in general, these fights shouldn't be going too much longer than six, six attacks. And, like, honestly, you should be able to see after six attacks where the fight's going to go. And if the fight's going to go in a bad situation, and a bad situation that goes to worse from you reloading, you should be leaving that fight anyways, because if you're, if the, if this is a downhill downhill battle, you shouldn't really be pushing that anyways, and having the extra bullets isn't going to make that difference. Uh, on the other hand, if you're obviously going to be coming out on top on that engagement, they should be leaving. If they aren't leaving, then you having to reload generally isn't going to make too much of a difference anyways. Like, um... The time it takes for you to reload. I mean, obviously it's annoying because they're gonna—they're generally gonna basically be able to get an extra hit on. But if the fight is so in your favor that they should be backing out in the first place, uh, like I said, obviously they might just back out, and you'll be able to see that in the first in in the basically six hits. Uh, the only time it really becomes relevant is in a 
even to even 1v1 where someone's being extremely stubborn and someone wants to just stay to the very end, but it's kind of hard to match a gun user even for even. It's very hard to match a gun user early game even for even. And late game, if you've used your early game effectively, then you're going to have that same edge at the very end. And if you haven't used your early game effectively, you're going to be outscaled anyways, so the extra bullets again don't matter. But what I'm saying is, it's very hard to match a gun user 1v1 in terms of early game damage, because guns are just very, very powerful early game. So the only real people who are going to be able to match you and able to be fighting you in a stubborn 1v1 and staying versus you 1v1 are other gun users, other bow users maybe. And like I said, those people are going to have to reload as well. So uh, at the end of the day, a lot of times there's no reason to really use uh, that accessory slot instead of something like Moonlight Pendant, which is just such a good, uh, such a good accessory, or Kundala, which is such a good accessory. A lot of times you just don't want to be passing up on these opportunities because you're like, well, I've got magazine, that's good enough. The next noob, quote unquote noob trap item I want to talk about is essentially any arm armor that isn't Galaxy Watch or a shield or I guess I guess the OPG can kind of count or or the radar. Obviously the radar is pretty stupid. Uh, Sword Stopper is kind of a niche item. Uh, I gotta admit I think it's kind of niche and it's it, it's okay based on if your route supports it. Um, if your route is gonna basically, if you're on a route where you get Sword Stopper for free, then that's kind of a niche, it's kind of niche based on that, that route, and I guess that's kind of okay. Um, obviously, I'm talking a lot for kind of the route that I take. If you watch any of my Jenny videos, you'll know that I, the offensive route I take basically gives me Sword Stopper for free. So I take it and I use it, but that is kind of dependent on the route, and that's kind of very niche based off of the route. A uh, Crimson Bracelet is great if you're planning to build that into Imperial Crown later. I have to admit that, so Crimson Bracelet very, very early. Yeah, that's nice if you're planning to build that into Imperial Crown later. Uh, Sheath is kind of another niche, almost gimmicky option uh, as well for uh, for Blade users for sure. Uh, but the, at the end of the day, what I want to highlight here is if you're passing up the time to build Galaxy Watch, uh, to go out of your way to build something like Squad Leader Armband, or even the Crimson Bracelet, or Sheet, or Sword Stopper, if you're going out of your way to build these, if you're expending extra time and resources to get these, then you're you're getting basically you're you're getting jabated into not being able to use the Galaxy Watch, which is like the best we the best armor in the game. Like Galaxy Watch, even if you're not a gun user, even if you're not a bow user. The, the the ability not synergizing into your weapon doesn't matter. The armor is insane that you get off this. The armor is just amazing. And, like, it's not, it's really not that hard to craft. Like, the only awkward part for crafting Galaxy Watch, honestly, is getting the pen. And, like, you get pens off dogs. So, honestly, it's awkward getting the pen, but after that, like, it doesn't even matter. Because you get it off, if you get it off a dog, then you're good to go. Uh, oh, and one last thing, um... This is, it's not really a noob trap, I guess it's kind of, in a sense, but I've seen a lot of people use Meteor, I, and I'm, I'm bad for this myself, I'm super bad for this myself, but I've seen a lot of people use Meteorite and make it into Moonstone, and then just stop. So, unless you have plans to upgrade the Moonstone into something else specific that isn't, uh, isn't dependent, unless you're plan planning to use that later into something specific, just take the time to finish off the pendant. The pendant's good. The extra armor is very, very nice. Just take the time to finish off the pendant. Like, honestly, you may as well. So that's going to about wrap up this uh, part one. Uh, if I make a part two, if people actually like this, again, I'm not sure if people will, but if I make a part two, uh, the things I kind of want to talk about are good starter characters, why they're good for, like, good starter characters for newer players to learn, uh, why they're good, um, what makes them so kind of friendly to newer players, and... Like again, I'm not I'm not talking characters that are just like brainless and easy to use, but aren't effective. These are characters that are easy to be effective with. Is basically what I'm talking about here. So um, that's one of the things I want to talk about. Um, I've got a few other general small tips and tricks guides, like uh, not guides, tips and tricks ideas, like I kind of have with the box, uh, similar along the lines of that. Not really like along the lines, meaning like it's talks about utilizing an inventory slot, but it's just kind of small uh, tidbits like that. Uh, and then I'm also going to be going over kind of uh, food and areas to go to get food and recovery and kind of how to recover, where to recover, when to recover, uh, things like that. Because like a lot of people like, uh, I've seen a lot of newer players, like they're low on health, they go to the hospital and they die, just poof, die because they go to the hospital when they're low health. So I've got kind of a pretty big section on that that I want to talk about as well. Uh, as well as kind of just a general foods guide on kind of 
uh, the easiest foods to get, the quickest foods to get, uh, food items that you're going to want to hold on to to build later into food items, uh, for example, boiling water, but I have a bunch of uh, kind of items I want to say hold on to. Uh, so those are kind of the general ideas that I have. I've got a bunch more ideas as well. So I guess depending on how uh, how this video goes, I might, I might make a part two. But uh, yeah, let me know what you guys think, and uh, I'll see you next time.